Now it's time for last one of the smartest guys uh, from Sweden developing incredible stuff. And he's not only a professor at Lund University, right. but also a serial co-founder, which is really cool. True. Welcome to Ecosum. Thank you. Lars. Thank you very much, John. <clears throat> All right. So that was a fantastic uh, generalistic uh, overview that uh, Ike Weber gave to us. Uh, I'll be more specific, very research-based, very specific. I'll talk about research going on at Lund University, around Lund University, and also in some of the, the startup companies that I'm engaged in. Uh, so we have a generalistic technology based on something called nanowires that will affect, we think, solar technology, illumination, batteries, and many of the green tech areas. So what are nanowires? Well, they are, it's not two, like tubular, tubular structures. These are really crystalline rod-like structures. They can be long and slender or shorter and fatter. Uh, two examples here, indium austenite on top and gallium nitride LED nanowire actually on the bottom. Uh, our background is very much in, in developing this technology from where it was when we started 15 years ago, understanding the way nanowires grow very much, fundamental materials research, but also developing technology where we can, down to the atomic level, control heterostructures, which the left part of this uh, picture shows, where two different, totally different materials are combined with atomically sharp interfaces. Uh, we also were the first environment where we combined top-down patterning with bottom-up self-assembly growth to make perfect arrays of nanowires, which you can guess is, of course, the prerequisite for uh, LEDs and for, for solar cells. Uh, so this is uh, what we've been doing the last uh, five, six years, uh, developing nanowire, gallium nitride nanowire LEDs for LEDs, red, green, and blue LEDs, uh, developing nanowires for photovoltaics, and we came up with a technology which we think is going to revolutionize this field, namely a, a, a production technique called aerotaxi, where we do nanowires without, fabricate perfect nanowire devices um, without substrates in a continuous process. You'll see a bit about that in a minute. So this is the city of Lund. In the background, you see the bridge to Copenhagen and the turning torso in Malmö. In the foreground, you see the research facilities of the mobile phone industries like the Ericsson and the Sonys. Behind the photographer are these new materials facilities, the Max 4. It's going to be the world's brightest synchrotron. It's going to be open next summer. And also the ESS, the European Neutron Spallation Source. In the foreground, you see, uh, well, on the other side of the freeway, you see the science park called Ideon, where we have uh, these three companies that I mentioned, QNano, Solvoltaics, and Glow, uh, located uh, here. Yeah. So <clears throat> uh, much of the de development has happened in our dedicated Lund Nano Lab, which is an excellent facility for doing mater nanoscale materials research and bringing these nanomaterials to de real devices. <clears throat> so that's where GLOW had its first four years before it had to move for production capacity to, to California. That's also where Solvoltaics had its first three, four years in, in the technology development. So these are these three companies. I'll say a little bit about that. QNano is the mother company. It was created in 2005. I was the main founder of that. Uh, it has been very much collecting the IP from this research at the university. Uh, it has also been spinning out Glow and Sol. It's now in the stage of possibly spinning out uh, dislocation-free gallium nitride thin films for, for high-voltage electronics. I think many of you know the importance of that. And using a technology similar to that of Glow, or making not visible LEDs, but also UV LEDs specifically for, for water purification and for bacterial treatment and many other applications. So Glow is the company that maybe you, have heard, you might have heard most about. It's a company that uh, is now producing state-of-the-art uh, LEDs, not white LEDs, but really blue, green, and red. Something happened, okay. Blue, green, and red LEDs. So you see two examples here. Uh, state-of-the-art blue nanowire LEDs. It looks dotted. That's because they are each uh, individual nanowires here and also beyond state-of-the-art what it is on the market for the green, saturated green LEDs. So these are now being brought into you know, commercialization over it by a daughter, a daughter company, uh, Glow Incorporated USA, and now going into the market specifically for edge-lit uh, display applications like these, where you, um, uh, in principle, use the, the LEDs instead of pushing in white light into the, into the um, thin uh, liquid crystal, or the plates for the liquid crystal displays, you do pump in separately blue, green, and red, which has many advantages for the, for the energy efficiency and also for the 
uh, for the, the color quality of the, of the displays. Uh, this is a little bit futuristic. This is going to talk about research and the future. Right now, we can do monolithic uh, blue and green on the same chip by manipulating conditions for growth and processing. And right now, I have the task, you can say, in, in Lund, where we still have Glow ABs, more long-term research, to add to these nice pixels, the blue and the green, monolithically formed, to, to add the red. And I do that in a European project that I'm leading that goes towards the, its, its finalization now called Nanowires for Solar State Lighting, Nanowires for Light, in which we concentrate on adding to this fantastic blue and green, also the yellow and the red LEDs. I think we're going to be there pretty soon, but it's going to be primarily a European Glow AB uh, product. So Glow has had quite a lot, lot of visibility. Uh, last May, I was asked to go to Stockholm to represent the company to be pick up one of these awards for that was Clean Tech Group. Picked Glow as one of the top five for the last decade. Uh, for energy efficiency opportunity and also to represent the quality of Europe's science base. We like that. Uh, and uh, in October last year, when uh, it was announced these global clean tech 100, Glow was the only Swedish company that made it into that top list. So that's a good situation. Now we go over to the PV, which is the main topic. Um, so we started this company, Solvoltaics, came spun out of QNANO in 2008. Uh, it is still, I think, very solidly in Lund. We hope it's going to stay there. Uh, Eric Smith, the CEO, is here. Uh, and we agree on that. We have no reason to move, to a need to move away to another um, part of the world. We can do all this all in-house. This is a slide that uh, I can present so much better than I could, so I, don't, I just remind of the, the wise things he said about this. the solar energy is the only thing we have plenty of. Uh, this is not now referring also to these fantastic world records Oh, I see. I should. Uh, I'm sorry. The, the top one is now 46% from Fraunhofer. Sorry about that, Ike. Uh, and what we're going to do is to right now is to develop a technology together with Fraunhofer, actually, and some other European centers, to do 25 to 30% efficient solar cells by adding a, a, a 3 5 nanowire layer on top of a standard silicon cell, which we think is going to be a killer for the market. Uh, we had a joint European project that finished two years ago, and that was also maybe published this science paper. Uh, which was, at the time, it was an increase by a factor of three compared to what has been done before in these types of nanotechnologies. And it's, of course, very much based on the optimal design of these nanowires as nano antennas really sucking in all the photons, e even though they only cover 10 to 12 percent of the surface. That's an important part of the efficiency. Uh, at MRS, there was a, a, a keynote lecture given by Martin Green, who we both know. Uh, who spoke about really where is the future. I said the future is definitely in the combination of silicon, standard silicon, state-of-the-art silicon solar panels, putting on top of that 1.7, uh, 1.8 EV bang gap material that together we would push the, the efficiency up towards 30% or maybe beyond. Gallium arsenide is a critical material. We didn't have that until half a year ago. We could now do a gallium arsenide nanowire PV with 15.3% efficiency, and that's no reason to expect that this, con this progress will not continue. So this was done very strongly within Solvoltaics lab in Lund, but of course with a lot of interactions with the researchers at Lund University. Uh, talk about costs. The, the key thing for this is, of course, how can you make 3, 5 nanowire at a cost that would be acceptable for the, for the technology, for the applications? And we, I did, well, we, my group developed a technology called Aerotaxi in which we grow these nanowires uh, with a continuous process, uh, non-batch. You can keep on doing that for 12 hours per day or whatever you want. Uh, no substrate uses. They are, are all grown in terms of, of flying wires, and they grow with a tremendous growth rate. Instead of a few nanometers per second, they grow at least one micrometer per second. That changes the cost picture by, I think, up to two orders of magnitude. So we have a big research project now at Lund. Uh, we were able to collect one of these huge research projects from the Wallenberg Foundation in Stockholm, some 80 million, including equipment, a Swedish kroner only, sorry, 80 million Swedish kroner. And um, so this is now allowing us to build up a dedicated research lab at Lund University. This is what you see up here, where we can now do a continuous process of ideal PN junctions. So each of gallium arsenide or gallium arsenide, false gallium arsenide right now, um, nano-IP injunctions that are all collected and then oriented to make the solar panel. So this is still a Mickey Mouse version, if you think of what Solvoltaics has been doing by bringing this to the science park. So this is now a five meter tall version, upscaled by at least a factor of 50 in production capacity. So you can see that this can easily be scaled up to huge production facilities. <clears throat> a month from now, 
half a month from now. We're going to start a, a new European project, again, together with the Fraunhofer and some other partners, as you can see, uh, called Nano Tandem. And that's exactly what we're doing this, gallium arsenide thin film on, with a four-terminal tandem configuration uh, on top of standard silicon cells. You see the, the strong partners involved in this. Of course, we go to this niche here with, uh, with the cost, the lowest possible cost with, with this aerotaxi production f f uh, capacity and the, the high efficiency. Not to the 46, but to the up to 30% or so efficiency. And the aerotaxi is, of course, the key thing in this. So all this was development of new materials technologies, nano-scale materials technologies that uh, we see as crucial things for the future of, of this uh, technology area in key enabling technologies field. We know that Europe in general has a very strong background and standing in, in developing new materials technologies. And these are technologies that we have to give opportunities to develop to its full capacity and to use it for this industrial development. However, we know that this is not apps. These are not games. These takes eight to 16 or so years in developing really hard technology for key enabling technologies. So it requires long and strong investments. Um, Europe must there too, this is also in line with the theme of the discussion we're gonna have, set up facilities for fabrication. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna call it giga, what we're trying to do right now, we go from nano to I think maybe mega, we can probably time go to in the direction towards giga uh, capacity. But really to, to produce these advanced materials, technologies and, and advanced materials for the smart green future. I can say right now in Lund, we are setting up a new materials pilot production facility we call ProNano, which will be co-located just in the center between these materials facilities, MAX4 and the neutron spallation source, which I think is going to be an important place to be. This is sort of a futuristic picture. This is MAX Lab that is already there being built. It's going to be fully operational next summer. The neutron spallation source is now also built, and here is now the Science Village Scandinavia where we think we're gonna set up the, the nanofab facility for, to support these facilities and the facility supporting the, the facility here and to bring a lot of company development, make, being able to give good opportunities to bridge this uh, valley of death issue for companies going from research to full-scale development. I have 40 seconds left, so I just say that uh, I'm very grateful for the people that supported this research that brought about the nanowire technology in, in, in the university research one billion Swedish kroner in the last 15 years, after when I started this 15 years ago. And in the last 10 years, these companies have actually, in a very balanced way, brought, taken in also one billion Swedish kroners. It's like a, an interesting synergetic relationship between the research on the one side and the, the realization of the technology and the commercialization, and where also technology goes back to the research. It's a very healthy environment. So with that, I want to thank you all for your attention. Spot on, right on. <laughs> Lars, is any of your startups, uh, Glow, Solval, Tax, uh, currently raising money? Any opportunity for these guys to participate in this? <laughs> I would say in general crazy stuff? they are, yes, yes. <laughs> I said Eric Smith is here. I'm sure that Eric will. Right yeah, there he is, yeah. Talk okay. to Eric. He, he's, of course, the expert on the financing. Okay. I know my limitations. I try to understand the physics. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there is a, a Solval, Tax uh, CEO sitting up there. Okay, let's go.